Ecology of Everyday Life, Rethinking the Desire for Nature, by Kaya Heller, published by Black Rose Books, 1999. Postscript on an Ecology of Everyday Life While ecological restoration is necessary it alone is insufficient for reclaiming a desirable quality of social life. Ecology must evaluate the social, political, cultural as well as the biological dimensions of life, demanding the power for citizens to be able to determine the nature of their relationships with each other and with the rest of the natural world. An ecology of everyday life is a social ecology that translates the desire for nature into a politicized desire for direct democratic control through which citizens may create a society that is whole humane, and meaningful. We must cease to portray nature as a distant, pure, abstract thing removed from the everyday lives of people living in urban and degraded rural environments. It is time for nature to be brought down to earth, to become the very stuff of our lives, the crowded street in our neighborhood, the water with which we wash our clothes, both skyscraper and smokestack, as well as the plants, animals and other creatures with whom we share this planet. To fulfill its revolutionary potential, Ecology must become the desire to infuse the objects, relationships and practices of everyday life with the same quality of integrity beauty and meaning that people in industrial capitalist contexts commonly reserve for nature. It means recasting many of the values often associated with nature within social terms, seizing the power to create new institutions that encourage, rather than obstruct, the expression of a rational social desire for a cooperative, healthful and creative society. The idea of nature can no longer be the country home of our desires that place we run to in our dreams, longing for escape from the pain and confusion of life in the era of global capital. We must relocate the idea of nature within society itself, transforming society into a ground in which we may build, collectively, a new practice of both nature and community. The call for an ecology of everyday life speaks not just to our immediate physical needs for survival. In addition, it arouses the desire for a world forged by social desire in all of its forms, a life redolent with personal creativity and a quality of community life based on humane and ecological practices. Ecology provides a lens through which we may take a long and often excruciating look at our own lives a chance to evaluate the quality of our relationships, both local and global. And if we are not hardened by what we see, we realize that we have an enormous challenge before us. For once we appreciate the interconnectedness of life, we understand that we cannot simply work to save ourselves or a certain species of plant or animal, we realize that we must transform society as a whole. The demand for an ecological society cannot be reduced to an individual or personal quest for a better quality of life. As I have tried to illustrate, an ecology of everyday life entails instead a rational social desire to establish a quality of life for all people a desire that ultimately requires a dramatic restructuring of political, social and economic institutions. It asks that we transform our love for nature into an activist politics that strives to bring to society the best of what we long for when we talk about nature. This requires that privileged people reconsider attempts to simplify their lifestyles, to, in addition, grapple with what I call the complexity of complicity, a recognition that, despite the attempts of privileged people to extricate themselves from systems of injustice through personal lifestyle choices, because of the pervasiveness of overlapping systems of power, they will always remain embedded and thus complicit within such institutions as global capitalism, the state, racism, and sexism. But instead of despising themselves for this privilege, or trying to assuage their guilt by individually trying to lead simple lives privileged peoples might instead begin to redefine their guilt as ineffective privilege. They may identify their privilege whether it be based on physical ability, education, economic status, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, or nationality, and they may transform this privilege into a potent substance to be used for social and political reconstruction. Guilt associated with the privilege of money race, and education, for example may be transformed into time, economic resources, and information useful to political struggles. Privilege within complex systems of hierarchy can be morphed from paralyzing guilt into an active process of thinking rationally and compassionately about how to utilize particular resources to dismantle systems of power. 
recognizing the complexity of complicity means accepting that there are no simple or romantic escapes from the challenges that stand before us. We realize that instead of seeking comfort within a people less wilderness, we must confront and rebuild social and political institutions, a task that entails a long term struggle that is far from romantic. It requires that we embark upon the often arduous struggle of working with others to create ethical and rational political organizations and movements. An ecology of everyday life transforms ecology from a lofty romantic venture into an ongoing labor of love. Ecology is as much about the drudgery of licking envelopes for a mass mailing and fighting to save an urban community center in the Lower East Side of Manhattan as it is about saving a forest. Once we let go of romantic conceptions of desire, we are free to explore a social desire that rounds out our humanity enticing us to become ever more sensual, cooperative, creative, developmental, and oppositional. We may recast our lives in social terms, recognizing desire as an anticipation of the pleasure that comes from enhancing the satisfaction and efficacy of both ourselves and others. Here, ecology becomes the light by which we scrutinize our everyday lives, it is the voice through which we demand the power to bring forth a world in which we may live the boldest and most social expressions of our humanity. An ecology of everyday life entails rethinking our understanding of nature as well. Removing the idea of nature from its pristine and static display case we may see nature for what it is, a dazzling and dynamic evolutionary process that continues to unfurl about us and within us. Once we are able to locate ourselves within this evolution, we can begin to measure our everyday lives as they are against what they could be if only we were free to actualize our potential for such evolutionary coups as cooperation, creativity, and development. Suddenly the dull office job, the lonely neighborhood, the poverty, or even the unsatisfying privilege, all take on new meaning. Rather than constituting a personal failure or a lack of will, our withered communities and lives reflect an anti-social and hierarchical trend that has spread through humanity like an industrial fire. By recognizing our minds, our hands, our bones, and our hearts as part of natural evolution, as an evolutionary inheritance, we become outraged by this fire, breathing it into our lungs, transforming it into a moral outrage that is fuel for rational oppositional action. Transcending romantic and individualistic approaches to ecology we may finally face the everyday questions of social and political transformation. Ecology may then begin to strive to create the political preconditions for establishing an ecological society. While the notion of illustrative opposition proposed in these pages offers a way to rethink such preconditions, it cannot replace the need to build a wider revolutionary struggle. Instead, it provides a way to broaden discussions of ecological issues to include the widest revolutionary vision possible. That vision is one of direct democracy, the passionate process through which citizens may claim the political power to create a rational, ecological, and desirable society. An ecology of everyday life is about reaching for this desirable society reclaiming our humanity as we reclaim our abilities to reason, discuss, and to make decisions about our own communities. It is about looking into the uncharted wilderness of democracy itself, that delicious, empowering, and deeply social process through which we become a truly humane expression of that nature for which we have yearned all along.